Hello everybody and welcome to Heaven's On Fire. Uh, seems like it's been a while since we've been on, so I'm glad, uh, I'm glad if you could make it and join us tonight. Amen. Looking forward to a good time in the Lord. Amen. We believe that the Lord's got a, a good word and we believe that, uh, amen, that uh, you'll be strengthened and encouraged in the Lord. So we appreciate every one of you. Amen. That take time out of your busy schedule to join us. Thank you so much. Before we get started, as I do every Tuesday night, we like to give you our uh, 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 announcements and uh, let you kind of know what's going on. Amen. Uh, we want to start off by saying, uh, don't forget, every uh, Sunday morning at 1030 Eastern Time, Jubilee Ministry International from Newcastle, Pennsylvania, where pastors Mark and Jill Kaufman are there. And they have a powerful, powerful uh, uh, service where they have beautiful music and worship uh, and dance. It is so beautiful. Watch those young people worship the Lord. Amen. We, we need more of that, uh, more than ever, I believe. Uh, also, a wonderful word of life that uh, Pastor Mark and Jill share on Sunday mornings. It's always a blessing, strengthening, uplifting, a life-giving word. That's at 1030 Eastern Time. That's at Jubilee Ministry International. If you get a chance to join them, you will be blessed. Also, 1030 uh, Central Time, right here at the House of the Lord. Uh, Bob, Bobby Jean Taranjo are pastors here, and Paula and, and I, I get a chance. We love to join in and be a part of the worship here. <coughs> we know that you'll be strengthened, encouraged, and lifted up. Amen. It's always an encouraging word from Bob. Uh, and Bobby Jean and also Zach, we uh, just enjoy the powerful presence of the Lord and a life-giving word. That's at 1030 Central Time every Sunday morning. Amen. Right here at the house of the Lord. Also, the first and third Sunday and the last Saturday of the month at the church in Mooresburg, North Carolina, right here on Facebook Live, who are Darren and Dana Best are pastors. We encourage you to join them in their worship. You'll be strengthened and lifted up. The music is anointed. The singing, the worship is wonderful. Amen. And Darren always has a powerful word of the Lord. Amen. That's timely and, and it's just so needed. That's the first and third Sunday and also the last Saturday at 5 o'clock. I'm sorry. Yeah, it is 5 o'clock Eastern time uh, every uh, service time. So join them. You will be strengthened, blessed, and lifted up. Amen. Also, while I'm at it, I feel to take a moment and share this. Mark your calendar, and if you can, join us uh, at uh, Memorial Day weekend. And uh, if I get a chance here real quick, let me kind of give you those dates because I want to make sure you're there uh, on your calendar. Uh, that's going to be uh, Memorial Day weekend. That's May the 24th, 25th, and 26th. That's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the church, Mooresboro, North Carolina, their annual uh, Memorial Day weekend conference. Uh, we've been talking about this for some time with various ones. Uh, it is going to be a powerful, powerful time in the Lord. Make plans to join us uh, at uh, that weekend. That's Memorial Day weekend, 24, 25, and 26 of May. You will be blessed, you'll be strengthened, and you will be lifted up. So please make plans to join us, amen, get in touch with Darren, get in touch with uh, the, the, the church on their website, uh, on Facebook, and uh, get the information you need to make reservations. You will be blessed and lifted up, amen. Also, mark your calendars, October, and here again, I'm going to get those dates, make sure I got it right, uh, for their annual conference. Uh, I believe this is 47, is it, Bob? I think it is. I believe so. Okay, the 47th annual conference, that's going to be October 10, 11, 12, and 13. It starts on a Thursday night, 10, 11, 12, and 13, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Make plans on being with us. Uh, it will be right here in Dixon uh, at the Montgomery Bell State Park. You will be blessed. You'll be strengthened and lifted up. Keep these dates and these times in mind. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time of the Lord. So make plans on joining us there. Amen. All right. I want to get into the Word tonight. If you want to, you can go with me to, uh, well, I'm going to go, uh, I want to go to 2 Kings 4. That's where I want to go. Uh, 
we're going to jump back to 1 Kings 17, but we're going to take off from there. I want to talk to you a little bit about Elisha and Elijah tonight, but and what I see going on. But I want to give you this song as I start off on Tuesday night. So good to see the various ones. I, I don't see everybody that's names are popping up, but I do see some of you. And uh, I just want you to know the word of the Lord tonight is for you. Some I've talked to, some I have not. Uh, but uh, you'll feel the witness of your spirit, and I want you to know the word of the Lord is, is for uh, uh, a Melchizedek priesthood tonight. So tune in. Amen. This song was given by a precious friend of ours, uh, Faith Simons from Cross Plains, Texas, a number of years ago. She has since crossed over. Amen. And uh, she, uh, the Lord gave her this song, and it's such a blessing, and I believe that it is so relevant for what God is doing right now in the body of Christ the world over. Heaven's on fire. Destruction, it seems. Earthquakes and shakings and broken dreams. But this is the best place I have ever been there's a new heaven and a new earth and righteousness within. So let the fire burn away all the failure in me and let the shaking establish perfect harmony till only the pureness of Christ shall fill this land until the Word made flesh be manifested again. Amen. Uh, while you're getting ready to join me here in the book of Kings, I forgot one thing. I want to give you our mailing address and say thank you uh, for those of you that have written to us or that maybe you share with us uh, on Facebook Live or you write to us in a text or email or however you choose to correspond with us, we always love hearing from the body of Christ. And for those of you that do take time to write, and we do appreciate that, write to us at Gary and Paula Gatlin at 8533 McCrory Lane. That's M-C-C-R-O-R-Y, McCrory Lane, Nashville, Tennessee, 37221, and we'll be giving you that address a little bit later on in the broadcast. So, let, let's get started tonight. I, I, I want to share something with you uh, that God has, has placed in my heart, and I, I'm praying that I can make, make some sense. I pray that uh, I, I can convey to you what God has dropped in my spirit. Now, uh, I want to, if I can, in your minds, and heart, I want to overlay this stories here of Elijah and Elisha over what's taking place in the world today. That I see such a, a corresponding move of God that I, uh, I know that some of you will bear witness with this, some of you will feel the anointing in this, and, and knowing this, you'll see what God is doing. Uh, God basically has always said in the scriptures, He said, I do nothing unless I first reveal it to my prophets. And I'm seeing a witness of this around the globe. Uh, now, having said that, uh, I want to start with Elijah, and then we're going to jump over to 2 Kings 4 and with Elisha. Uh, and, and their lives were very, very uh, corresponding one to another. You see a lot of the same types of stories in their ministries and in their lifespan. Uh, but we're going to start with Elijah first. Uh, and what I want you to see is this. He basically comes out of nowhere. Okay? Uh, he has no credentials with the uh, 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 religious communities or the established uh, governmental authorities. He just kind of shows up, kind of a wild man. And he shows up, and the first thing he does is go to the king, and he says... It's, uh, the heavens are closed. It's not going to rain again until I say so. And then he kind of disappears, so to speak. God moves him and moves him to the brook Kerith, uh, which it, it basically means to cut. And that, that's a root word where we get covenant from. And, and that's another story altogether. But in this thing here, we find what takes place is that God feeds him during this time period uh, of a few years, God feeds him with a raven, which is by their uh, uh, standards or their religious practices was known as an unclean bird. And what that means to us today is this, is the ministry that God is using to change the atmosphere of the world and the religious community in, in specific is he's feeding them with a word that uh, is not sanctioned by the religious world. 
I hear ministry that God is raising up in this hour that that uh, the established religions of the world, and you can put any kind of denomination you want on that, is not being sanctioned or, or approved by them. But we're seeing God sustain men and women of this hour with an anointed word that he has chosen in himself from the foundation of the world. He's feeding them and taking care of them. Now, the Bible says after a period of time that this uh, uh, the brook dried up, <coughs> and God spoke to him. And said, "Go to Zarephath. Zarephath means a furning, a furnace, uh, and, and or a place of tremendous heat. And and no doubt there's a ministry and men and women right now listening to me. You're saying, Amen to that. I found myself lately in, in a place that's hot, a place that is uncomfortable for the flesh. And God said that and there's a widow woman there that He's He's chosen uh, to take care or sustain. Now, here's where we're going to very briefly get into this, and then we're going to go over into Elisha because I'm trying to set the foundation right here because I want you to hear what God is saying right now uh, because we're going to get over into uh, to the book of Genesis and we're going to basically get all around the scriptures and you're going to see the corresponding word of the Lord take place here. Uh, what uh, takes place, God sends uh, Elijah to the widow woman. Uh, the Bible said that she is gathering a couple of sticks. At first he tells uh, the woman, if you'll make me uh, a, a little bit of bread, you know, and so forth and so on. She said, well, I have no, uh, I've only got a little bit of uh, 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 flour or uh, and a little bit of oil. And that's all I've got. I'm gathering two sticks, which is symbolic. Uh, and uh, I want, I'm going to make a, the last meal, so to speak, for me and my son. And then, then we're going to eat it die. And he says, if you'll listen to me, if you'll just do what I ask you to do, he said, God's going to do something for you. And we know the story of how that the Bible said that she first uh, 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 did something there. She, she did what he asked. She made him a little piece of bread and, and something to eat and drink. And, and out of that, God caused the cruise of oil and the flour to never uh, uh, fade, but sustained her through all of that time of transition. Now, I want to jump ahead, but, but lay another foundation before we go any further. And then I'm going to get into the explanation here. What tonight I'm talking about is preparation for provision. This is what I'm talking about. <clears throat> it doesn't mean at all what, what you might think at this point, even though as God, I, I what I, I, my mind went a certain way and God began to expand it. And I mean, wow, it makes a lot more sense the other way. Now, here we go. The Bible said over in 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, we find Elisha at this time. At this point, Elisha has transitioned. Elisha comes along. It's a greater anointing. It's a greater move of the Spirit of God, even though the pattern seems to be the same. We know the story of how that that uh, uh, he goes. Uh, oh, let me back up real quick. I'm jumping ahead here because I, I, this thing's all over me. So please bear with me. Uh, at what the Lord said, and we know that uh, Elijah. Let's go back to him real quick. Elijah, uh, <coughs> after this uh, 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 of him coming out from under the, the the little widow woman there, where she made the bread and the, the meal for him. Uh, uh, that they have the big, and he's getting ready to remove or open the heavens, uh, that what took place there was uh, he exposed 800, 450 prophets of Baal and the uh, 400 false prophet, prophets, 850 false prophets. Uh, they get wiped out. Now, as I told you before, let's lay, I want to lay the story over the scenario of where we've been living the last number of years. Personally, I believe that a lot of what's been taking place meaning the COVID thing and meaning a lot of the mess going on in our government and all of the stuff that's been happening around the world that, that God has begun to shut down a lot of the ministries that their heart has not been for God and for his people that's been all about a job or a career and not an anointed calling. I'm not saying that, 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 that uh, uh, matter of fact, I feel this, uh, every minister I've ever heard or read about or known started off right. They started off hungry. They started off honest and open before the Lord. But somewhere along the journey, the, the, the journey has gotten compromised. Their anointing has gotten compromised, whether it be for, through money or some other thing that has caused a distraction in them. And I don't want to get sidetracked into that tonight. But let me go on to say this. <clears throat> we know the story how Jezebel came after him. He ends up in a cave. He ends up standing there. He goes to the mouth of the cave 
And when he gets there, we find that, that, that all of these, quote unquote, past moves of God, past moves of the Spirit, had come uh, uh, to him. It said there was a mighty rushing wind. There was uh, lightning and thunder. There was a great storm. There's all of these wonderful moves of God in the past came to him. But it says God was not in those moves any longer. Even though we find that there are people that still build their lives, their anointings, their ministries. They build <coughs> everything based upon that. And that's where they pitch their tent. But God's not there. They have a, 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 a something in their spirit, something in their mind, something in their heart, but there's no move of God there anymore. But the Bible said that God spoke in a still, small voice, and God, uh, Elijah heard him. What took place was this. God spoke in a still, small voice. That speaks of an, an intimacy, a coming away. I want to bring you into an intimate relationship where uh, your ego cannot function, where your dreams and hopes cannot function, I want to cause you to come into an intimate relation where I can birth something in you that will transform and change the world. This is what God is doing right now. And uh, now from having said that, let me go further now. <coughs> Second Kings 4, where Elisha now, he is sent to the little widow woman. Here again, it's another widow woman. Meaning, what does that mean when you see the widow woman? It, in those days, uh, the husband was the covering. And here was a woman without a covering or without a covenant. Here's one that the religious world shunned. Here's someone that, that uh, uh, everybody wants somebody to come in under somebody. And that's not what this is about. What this is about is men and women that can walk together in the anointing of the Holy Spirit and set God's people free. Now, I want to get off of that just for a second. Watch this. The Bible said he goes there, amen, and he, he wants her to, to do something. As a matter of fact, let me just get over here real quick because I want to give you this. <clears throat> she comes to him. She comes to him, and she said, in 2 Kings 4, verse 1, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. Uh, and, and we're back, and me and my two sons, we're, we're about to be put into bondage. We're about to be sold into bondage. We don't have any money. We don't have any way to function, to live, or survive. Meaning she has no covenant, no covering. There's nothing in the religious world that can do her any good. And, and he says, what do you have in your house? And she says, I don't have anything but a pot of oil. I want you to hear this. I'll, all I've got is an anointing that has sustained me thus far. I don't have anything for anybody else. I'm just trying to survive myself. And I don't know who I'm talking to necessarily tonight, but I know the word of the Lord is going out because I want you to hear this right here. And, and, and because this is where we are. When I'm talking to you tonight, I'm talking to you about preparation for provision. But I want you to hear this. The provision I'm talking to you about is not what you think. So hang on. It's going to get good. The Bible says... Amen. That he tells her. All right. And I want to get this straight. So you ain't know, you'll know I'm not making it up. <laughs> even though I might. He said to go and borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors. And watch this. Even empty vessels borrow not a few. Verse 4. When thou art come in, shut the door upon thee and thy sons and pour out. Now, here's where we're going to go right here. The Bible said... He said, go borrow a vessel. In other words, what God is about to do, it, you are not sufficient where you are right now to be able to accomplish what I'm about to do. I'm about to do something above and beyond your wildest dreams. Now, I want you to hear this. We immediately think in terms of something to do with the natural self. But here's what God began to speak to me. And I want some of you to watch right now. Your name's on my screen. I want you to hear this is the word of the Lord to you. God said the provision is not the oil. The provision is the word coming from the man Elisha. All right, let me back up and give you the qualifications for that statement. Go back to the book of Genesis. The Bible said that God began to prepare Joseph to rule and reign in Egypt. Now, that, that's what it is right there. All right, watch this. The Bible says, amen. 
and, and I believe this all my heart, before the foundation of the world, God knew that there was going to be a famine coming to the land of Egypt, that if he did not have the, the oil and the wine and the corn and, and, and somebody, if you please, to be sitting in a place of authority, that an entire nation of Egypt, entire nation of Israel would be totally wiped out. So he begins to provide to the, to <clears throat> the preparation, if you please, for the provision. He began to prepare Joseph through the, through, the, through the prison house, through all that he went through. So what are you saying? The provision was not the, the corn and the oil and the wine. The provision was not the flour and the oil in the, in the story of Elijah. The provision was not the oil that was to be poured out in the case of the widow woman with Elisha. The provision was Joseph. Some of you listening to me right now, you are that provision that God has been preparing to change and, and, and cause a people to survive. Now, having said that, watch this. God knew that, that the, 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 the seven years of plenty was coming. God knew that. He gave the, the Pharaoh the dream, seven years of plenty. They knew it was coming. Seven years of famine. They knew according to the dream. They didn't know what it meant, but they knew it was coming. And please understand something. We as human beings... We get so caught up in what God's blessings is right now that we don't understand. We need men and women with the mind of the Spirit of God and the wisdom of the Word of the Lord to stand in a place and say, okay, this is what we need to do. And if you'll remember, if you'll remember, the Bible said the sons of Issachar had a mind what the people of Israel ought to do. When everybody else was saying we need to this and we need to that, the Bible said the sons of Issachar said, you know what we need to do? Everything's split up right now. But we need to make David king over all Israel. Because right now, David's only king of Judah. But we need to make him king over all of Israel. <clears throat> and the first thing that David did when he became king over the whole thing, his first order of business, he said, we've got to get the Ark of the Covenant home. Because that means we've got to get the authority of the moving of God himself in our midst or else we've not done anything. And here's what I see God saying right now. He said, I've been preparing some of you Josephs. You've been in your prison house. You've been misunderstood. Your own families have looked down on you and discounted you. But I'm here to tell you, you are the provision. It's not the money. It's not the, the, the anointing or the size of your churches or the size of anything. It's you. You are that provision, Joseph, that God has been preparing. Because without the provision... Without you and the wisdom of God that he's placed in that situation, the seven years of plenty <clears throat> would have been brought in. They would have uh, uh, filled the storehouses and then they'd have ate it all up before. The, the, and they would have said, oh, God has blessed us. God has blessed us. Look at the storehouses are filled. But they would not have had anyone with the understanding that we need to uh, 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 begin to take the wisdom of the government authority placed in us to preserve and save because there's coming some hard times. And I'm here to tell you, amen, some of you need to listen to this right now. Amen. God said you are the provision. That wisdom that I brought you through, through all the hell you've been through and all the fires and all the torment and all the frustration, he's been preparing you as the provision to get ready to not just function. See, see the provision is not the functioning of when it's plenty, because the plenty anybody can function. But it's the provision and the knowledge and wisdom of God when the hard times come and you're there to heal, to restore, to feed, and to deliver and raise up what God wants to do in this hour. That's the provision that God has. Now, let me jump ahead a little bit here. <clears throat> and we can go we can go all through the scriptures, you know, uh, about this. How that time and time again we look at the, the stories that of what God has done. And, you know, it reminds me, if you please, amen, uh, of even when little Mary uh, uh, received the, uh, the visitation from the angel and said, Thou sound favor, uh, that thing that's in thee is, uh, is holy, and he's going to save the world from their sins and so forth. So on. the Bible says she pondered in her heart because she didn't know. And here goes Jesus. He grows up. He starts feeding all the 5,000. And please understand something. Please understand something. That when Jesus fed the 5,000 men plus women and children, 
Uh, we, we look at, uh, uh, oh, oh, he took uh, uh, five uh, loaves and a couple of fishes and he turned it into a, a bundle and they took up 12 baskets in a row. Oh, what a provision, what a provision. The provision was not, the provision was not the loaves and the fishes. The provision was Jesus himself. He was the provision. He was what took place that began to feed and take care of the hungry. And so here we have, and we could go on and on and on through this. We need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that, that we've had our eyes like everybody else upon the material, mundane things. But God said, I've been raising you, Joseph's, up from the prison house. I've been raising up all of you men and women that's been through hell and rejection and torment. He said, you have been preserved. And if you remember what Joseph told his brothers, and matter of fact, his brothers reacted like most church folks today. That when, 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 when Joseph revealed himself to his own brothers, uh, his brothers said, oh man, we're in trouble now. <clears throat> He's in such a place of authority. He's really going to get even with us. We don't have a prayer. And if you'll, remind, if you'll remember, if you'll remember what Joseph told him, he said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. God sent me ahead to be your provision or to preserve your life. I'm here. There's hard times. There's five more years of famine coming. I'm here to make sure you're fed, you're happy, and you're not hungry. And that's what I see God doing with some of you men and women out there right now that are hearing this anointing of the Lord that's coming forth in this hour. God says, I've caused you to go through all of these things. Uh, and yeah, we might have a few scars and a few bumps and scrapes, but we've survived this because God has kept his hand on us and he's watched over and preserved that seed of God that he's put in us. And he said, now the time has come. Amen. We've come out of our Zarephath. We've come out of our fire. We've come out of the cave. We've come out of all of the mess that we've been through. And now we stand right now. As we look around creation, I'm talking about right now, 2024. We look around at all the failings of all the governments of whatever party doesn't matter. As we look around at the torment and, and all of the mess going on in the world <coughs> and religious communities. Pick your denomination, it don't matter. Uh, and I'll even say kingdom also. They have no answers for anybody. All we can say is hang on for some glad morning. Or we'll say hang on, it'll get better. Or we just say hang on. But I'm here to tell you, God's raising up some men and women that they are the provision. And said, God sent me ahead that I might preserve your life. I'm here with the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of God, not because I'm holy, not because I'm righteous, not because I'm better than, not because I have an ego and I'm trying to build my ministry, but we're here because God is raising up and blessing men and women and saying, I'm beginning to position, I'm beginning to position some of you in places you never dreamed you would be in. You're in jobs, you're in situations, you're in relationships, you're somewhere that you don't have any idea how you got there or even your purpose. But God says, I placed you there and I'm about to put a word in your mouth that's going to begin to set a new order in a new place because God's getting ready to do something. Now get ready for this right here. The Bible says, finishing that story of Elisha, the Bible said that, that he told the, 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 the widow woman, go and, and get a bunch of empty vessels. All right. Now let's transition our thinking just for a minute here. I want you to hear this. He said, those of you, amen, need to understand. He said, you go get some empty vessels. Don't get those that have their ego in mind. Don't get those that have a vessel with their own dreams, their own visions, their own ministry, their own this, their own that. He said, I cannot fill a vessel that's not empty. I cannot do anything with it. It's no good to me if it's polluted with something that is not in line with what I'm trying to do. And here we find what God is saying right now through Elisha who told the woman. He said, we have been without a covenant for a time and a season, but there's coming a fresh new anointing. This fresh new anointing is not going to come because you fast and pray and do all of the things that everybody says, the religious community says, you got to do. This comes from the appointment of God as he begins to say, get ready. I'm about, we, and this is when I say get ready, I'm talking about here and now. This thing is breaking on us as I speak. The Lord is saying, watch this. He said, you tell her, you get all these vessels. They got all the vessels. Nothing happened. The woman didn't do anything but what she said to do. She goes out there and she gets the vessels. All right, Lord, I've got all these empty vessels. My house is full of empty vessels. I run out of people to borrow from. 
I, the stores don't have any. I got no more. What do I do now? See, it's not because we're so smart or we're so anything. He said, you go get them. Go get them. Then the, the anointing changed. The word changed in the mouth of Elisha. The first thing, she, okay, here I am. Now what do I do? I'm here, she said, with me and my sons. We're here. We got no future. To have children, to have sons, it was type and shadow of a future. What does your future hold? Uh, too many of us, we're looking like the little widow woman before Elisha comes. We got just enough to take care of today, and then we're done. And we have no future. We have no understanding. We have no anything. But God begins to send a new provision, a new anointing in your midst. And watch what he says. He says, when you've got all you can handle there, everything in your house is empty. You've lost your hopes, your dreams, your understanding. Everything is nothing but God is what is in the house. I've just got a tiny bit of oil, just a flicker of a flame in the house. He said, I want you to do one more thing. And this is where some of us need to hear this. Shut the door on you and your sons. Just close out your yesterdays. Close out your woulda, coulda, shoulda. Close out all of that stuff. Just you and your, no, 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 not your mistakes of yesterday. Not if I'd have just done it a different way. Not if I'd have compromised. Not, no, no. He said, all I want you to do is bring your sons in with your empty vessels and close the door. Shut out your yesterdays. Shut out all of the naysayers. Shut out all your hopes, your dreams. Shut your door on everything. There's nothing in that room now but you and your future. And God says, here's what I got want you to do. Once that door is shut, once you closed out and every vessel in the house is empty, oh, hallelujah, uh, then the Bible says <coughs> the oil begins to flow. Oh, hallelujah. God begins to bring a new anointing, a new day, a new manifestation of what God wants to do in your life because now everything it's gone. What did he do? He sent a provision. The preparation was the, was the empty vessels. The preparation was the uh, getting ready. How did he prepare? How did he prepare that woman? I, I got I to gotta give you this real quick. How did God's preparation, what did that work? What did that mean exactly? It meant simply this. The preparation was not her, was not her getting the empty vessels, even though it's what it looked like. It's what it sounded like. The preparation was not was not uh, uh, closing the door. Those sound like it. Those are good examples. What was the real preparation? The preparation was Elisha going through hell. And preparation was Elijah going through hell. Was Joseph going through hell. Every man and woman of God listening to me right now. All of our lives, our disappointments, our rejections, our frustration our uh, uh, failing health, our failing finances, our failing everything. All those things are preparation for the provision that you are as he sends you into the lives of men and women around the world. Some he'll send just to a person over a cup of coffee. Some of you he'll send to somebody in your family. Some of you he'll send to your church to a congregation and only some of them will begin to hear. Some of you he'll send to your job and only one or two will begin to hear. But mark my word, nothing in God is wasted. And God said, what I've got to do, I've been preparing you your whole life through the hurts, the faults, the failures, the victories, the, the wonderful things, the bad things, everything about it has been preparation for you who are the provision as God begins to send us forth and we begin to heal the land. I hope this has made some sense tonight. But I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that God says that, that as we begin to shut out our yesterdays, our faults, our failures, and our second guesses, and our plan Bs, and all the other things we come up with, and i got to tell you, I'm as guilty as anybody, if not more so to everybody I'm talking to tonight. But I'm here to tell you, God says, I've brought you this far. Not to cast you aside. Not to let you know how horrible things are. But to let you know I am your strength. For when you are the weakest, God says I'm the strongest. And this is the greatest thing we need to understand. That God said I've been preparing you to be the provision. We, we want to say, oh, oh, I, 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 I need some help on, on my, on paying my rent. 
or I need some help on this or that. Uh, and so God sends some money. Oh, he sent the provision. No, you're the provision. You're the provision that God's been working on. And you are the answer that he's going to begin to send into people's lives to change the situation. I pray this has made some sense tonight. I, I, I don't know. I, if, if Paula was sitting here, she'd be giving me the look, Bob. <laughs> she, she, she brought, bless her heart. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, every one of y'all, for praying for my sweet wife, Paula. She's, she's doing a lot better and getting stronger. And we just appreciate all of you standing with us tonight and trust that this has made some sense. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I'm going to close this down tonight, but I, I want you to know that we appreciate every one of you so very much. Thank you for sharing your evening with us. We love you so much and, and just know I, I, some of the names that I see popping up. Just know this. God says you are the provision and watch things change because you breathe into a situation. Just breathing into a situation, walking into a room, and you ain't got to go out in there and pass out tracks and anoint everything with oil till you get everything slick. No, you just go in there and your presence, because of the prep preparation and the provision that God has made you, you will change the situation. <laughs> amen. What a great time in God. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget, amen, these announcements that I've given you every Sunday morning. At 10.30 Eastern Time, uh, Jubilee Ministries International, Pastors Mark and Joe Kaufman, you will be so blessed with their anointed music and anointed worship, and what a powerful word that, that comes out of Pastor Mark and Jill. That's at 10.30 Eastern Time. Also, 10.30 Central Time Sunday mornings at the House of the Lord right here in Dixon, Tennessee. Pastor Bob and Bobby Jean Taranjo have such a powerful, powerful word wonderful uh, music and, and worship in the song and it is a great time in God. And when you can, please join us. That's 1030 on Sunday mornings, uh, Central Time, right here in Dixon, Tennessee at the House of the Lord. Also, the first and third <coughs> Sunday night and uh, the last Saturday night at 5 o'clock Eastern Time at The Church in Mooresburg, North Carolina. Uh, Darren and Dana Best are pastors there. You will enjoy. You will be lifted up and strengthened with the uh, wonderful music, the wonderful worship, and the powerful word of life that, that God has given to Darren. We so appreciate that. Don't also forget the Memorial Day conference coming up, Memorial Day weekend. That's 24, 25, 26 of May, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, at The Church, Mooresboro, North Carolina. I promise you it's going to be a life-changing, wonderful, wonderful time in God. Make plans to be there. Also, October uh, what is it, 13, 14, 15, 16, I think it is, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, October, uh, at the House of the Lord, the 47th Annual Conference will be right here in Dixon, Tennessee, at Montgomery Bell State Park. It's going to be a great time in God. Make plans on your calendar. Mark those. Please make plans to join us. We promise you, you will not be disappointed. Amen. And write to us at uh, Gary and Paula Gatman. That's 8533. McCrory Lane, M-C-C-R-O-R-Y, McCrory Lane, Nashville, Tennessee, 37221. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We trust that you've been strengthened and lifted up in the Lord. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.